Hello, and today we're talking about assessing your students' study skills. This goes along with um, what we were doing in the Peer Tutoring Tips and Tricks series that, uh, that I have up on YouTube. And so this is part, partly um, assessing their ability to, you know, read and do math, but it's also assessing their study skills. If they have a structure set up for how to study, um, or if they don't, or if they do, but it's not working, especially when you get into college. Um, high school is a completely different ball game. Your study, your study structure for high school is going to be completely different. So once you get into college, or a lot of students have been out of school for several years and then they're just now returning, you're, you don't know how to study for these college classes. And so it's very important as a tutor to be able to assess where the student is at as far as setting up some sort of study structure and they have a system in place. So I put together this, uh, this chart to, uh, so it would be pretty easy to follow along to assess their study skills. And we'll talk about more about all of this stuff later. Um, this is pretty much you, your entry point is up here. You want to, um, you want to ask how and when do you usually study this subject? You know, do you usually study math or do you usually study biology? Um, you want to ask the student that. So the whole, the whole point of doing that is you're trying to find out if they have a study system in place. So a study system is just, you know, they have a system together, they know how to take notes, they have designated times, or they don't have a problem fitting in um, time to study outside of class and outside of the tutoring session. So if you notice, there's three options, there's three answers you could pretty much give if the student, whether or not the student has a study system in place. Either, yes, they do have a study system and it works, and or yes, they do have a study system, but it's not working. And the other answer would obviously just be no, they don't have a study system in place. Now, if you notice down here on the bottom, there are uh, there are three uh, portions that go along with this. Or there's three tags that go along with this. One is the weaving. Let's get a new color here. One is weaving and uh, one is building and building is for the other two. So uh, weaving is what you're going to be doing if uh, the person does have a study system in place and it's working fine then all your there there's already a structure there if you think of you know weaving a basket or something there's already a structure there there's already a framework there the student does have a study system some sort of framework in place for them to study and so all you have to do is weave into it filling in the gaps that the student needs such as explaining certain problems or giving them practice problems to do or just you know explaining how to do something or showing them how to do something so you're just weaving into their existing structure um, and providing uh, a few things that's going to fill in the gaps. Now building, on the other hand, is for if the student doesn't have an efficient study structure, there's no framework in place for them to go on. And so what you're going to have to do in the study session is build a study a framework for them on how to study, how to time, you know, manage your time, and uh, how to take notes, how to organize your notes. So that would be building. So when you go to fill out the paperwork for your student at the end of each session, there is a place where it asks, what, what are the constructing phrase did you use? And you would check either weaving or building. And so this explains a little bit about what the weaving and building is. If, if the student, again, has already has a framework in place for how to study and you're just weaving in there, filling in the little gaps, answering questions, then you check weaving. If the student does not have a framework in place, then you're going to have to build one with the student. So that would be building. 
So now here's the possible answers on um, for uh, how and when do you usually study this subject. If you notice, um, there's there's pretty much two things. Either yes, they do have a good study study habits. They do have good study skills in place, and that would be your weaving that we just went over, or the student needs a study plan. And that would be for both uh, options, if the student does have a study plan but it's not working, or if no, the student doesn't have any study structure set up. So this would be if they do have a study structure set up, yes, or they have a study structure set up, yes, but it doesn't work. or they do not have a study structure set up. Yes, but, or no. So if you look down here on the good study skills in place, they have, you can tell if the student has good study skills or good study structure. If they have designated times to study, they know, you know, when do you normally study this subject? And they're like, oh, on Tuesday nights or after class, I sit in the library and I study. You know, they have, they know and can tell you exactly when they study for this. Also, uh, they know their definitions of the vocabulary words. Uh, and back in a different uh, lecture, I mentioned that if you have the student read out loud some of the the text or some of the the um, PowerPoints they have, if they stumble a lot over the vocabulary words and they just kind of gloss over them, they don't understand what those words are. They haven't looked them up and found out exactly what they mean. So. Uh, if they stumble over vocabulary words while they're reading out loud, or they can't tell you what uh, these vocabulary words mean, then they don't know the definitions. So, but if they do know the definitions and they're they're great reading them, they don't stumble over them, and they can tell explain to you in their own words what uh, what these words mean, then that's great. That that's an indicator that they probably have good study skills in place because they're looking up these words. Also, uh, they'll have good study skills if they employ a memorization technique like note cards. Quizlet is absolutely fabulous. Um, you can make up your own uh, note cards and then you can quiz yourself on them. I always recommend people who use Quizlet to make up your own quizzes, make up your own note cards. Don't just go on somebody else's Quizlet and try to find the answers to something. I mean, you can do that, but half of learning the material and uh, memorizing the material, drilling it into your brain, is going to come out of the act of creating your own note cards. Just the simple act of writing down or entering into Quizlet uh, vocabulary words and terms, terminology and definitions and making up your own quiz, that's half of studying. That's half of drilling it into your, your memorization. Also, uh, you know the student's gonna have good study skills if they indicate they have an organization technique for their notes. So they take notes, you know, ask to see their notes. If they have like a nice outline, a nice neat outline where everything's organized, not just an outline they copied off the teacher, but an outline that they did themselves, or they drew a concept map, or um, whatever they'd use for organization, um, they have if they have a different subject on each page and they write a little uh, blurb about it in their own words explaining it just some type of logical organization for their notes if you ask to look at their notes and it's just one long run-on sentence for pages and pages and pages and there's no organization there then that's a danger signal so but if they have good organization then chances are they're going to have a good study structure also, a big, huge indicator um, for if whether or not the person has a good study skills is if are they on track with the syllabus or are they late turning in assignments? If they're on track with the syllabus and they can keep up in the class, even if they're not understanding everything, but if they're keeping up trying to study and get assignments turned in and everything, that's a really good indicator that they have a good study structure. Now. 
this other part over here, the student needs a study plan. If the student needs a new study plan, if theirs isn't working or if they just don't have one, they don't know how to set up a study structure, the indicators are uh, if they haven't studied or done their homework or if they're behind in studying or behind in turning in assignments. A lot of students will come in for tutoring and they're like, I'm 10 assignments behind. I don't understand this. And it sounds like they just kind of gave up because they didn't understand or they come in complaining that they don't have enough time in their schedule to get their assignments turned in, then they don't have a good study structure set up. They don't have, you know, it might be a time management problem, but that would be a uh, that would be included in not having a good study plan. Also, they don't know when they're able to study. If you ask them, you know, when do you usually study for this math class or when do you usually do your assignments? If they can't tell you, if they have no idea, they just, you know, if they just say something like, well, I just try to fit it in, or they say they don't know when they're able to study or they don't have time to study, or they give some sort of indeterminate thing like, oh, well, I study when my kids let me study or when my kids take a nap. You know, um, a lot of that isn't uh, reliable. And so if they don't have a time or place to sit down and look at things, even if it's only for 10 minutes at a time, 15 minutes at a time is all you need. Um, and actually that's, I would argue that it's better to study in 10 to 20 minute increments over several times instead of uh, sitting down for a marathon study session hours at a time. I think it's better to do 10 to 20 minutes at a time, but whichever is feasible for the students, we, we do have to work around, you know, life and jobs and everything. So ask when the student is able to study. If they don't know, then chances are they don't have a good study structure set up. Also, if they stumble over vocabulary words, I'm going to be going to the, back to this concept a lot because it's so important and it is such a big indicator to the student that to whether or not the student is understanding what's going on and whether or not they're studying correctly. So if they stumble over vocabulary words, they probably don't have a good study system in place because they haven't realized yet that they need to look those words up and really truly understand what those words mean in order to understand the subject. Also, and this is super important, um, you can tell because it's the long paragraph, but when the student is studying or even when they're in the tutoring session, if they get headaches from studying, if they're like, oh, my stomach hurts, or if they yawn and they've had a good night's sleep, or they slump in their chair, or they feel confused, frustrated, or sleepy, when they're studying or when they're in the tutoring session. These are physiological indicators that the person is going past words they don't understand. See, this goes back to doesn't understand vocabulary words. So that relates to a lot of things. But if the headaches, stomach aches, yawning, um, if you've seen a student come in and they're sitting up and the more and more they study, the more and more they're leaning over their their books and they have their head in their hands and they look like they're getting squashed by the air. Um, these are all indicators that the person is not understanding what they're reading. And if they keep reading, that's not going to get you to understand it any better. You have to go back and you have to look up the words, the big vocabulary words that are used, and you have to understand those and then read the text. So if they're getting confused, then chances are, if they're getting headaches and stomach aches, then chances are they don't, um, they don't have a good study plan in place. Now back to our chart. Um, now that you've seen uh, this le level, the no, they don't have a good study plan in place, or they do, but it's not working. A lot of students think that they have a good study plan in place, but it's really ineffective or yes, it, and it works. Let's look down at here for a minute on um, if they do have a good study plan in place. And so what you're going to be doing is just weaving in information to their already existing framework. That's why it's called weaving. 
So if they do have a study system in place, um, you're just going to weave in there into their existing framework by, you know, answering their questions, explaining the concepts, you know, you want to explain how to do this math problem, or you want to explain mitosis to them uh, in biology, or you want to explain how pressure and, and volume are related in gases and chemistry for chemistry. Uh, you want to just explain the concepts to them and you can and answer their questions and you do this by giving examples, uh, telling them a step by step, uh, going over the steps of something, especially like in biology, if you're in mitosis or meiosis, those are a chain of events that occur. So you want to make sure that they understand what happens first and then what happens second and what happens third, etc. cetera. Uh, explanations, and you also want to be able to demonstrate, you know, uh, by using some cards or some dice or, you know, just using your the objects that are on your desk or drawing a picture or something just to show them in real life what, uh, in, in real time and in real space, what the concept is. And we go over that on in, um, in a different video. Uh, also, you want to, if you're weaving uh, information into their already existing framework of studying, then you want to be able to give them practice questions. You want to be able to produce practice questions for them to do uh, during your study session, during your tutoring session, and also you might send the student home with some more practice questions for them to go over. Uh, you can do that from their own material if their teacher assigned them practice questions as long as it's not being graded as long as it's not part of their homework you can sit there and just do the practice questions their teacher suggested or you can find practice questions uh, at the end of the chapter usually in the textbooks or you can just find them online you can go online and google you know worksheets like for math you can google specific math worksheets for uh, uh, I use a lot of homeschool uh, websites that have have uh, um, practice questions on the on worksheets. So when you're doing the practice questions, you want to follow the old the old uh, proverb: see one, do one, teach one. So you show the student how to do a practice problem. You have the student do a practice problem, and then you ask the student to teach the practice problem back to you. Now, if you have yes or it, but it's not working study skills or no, they don't have study skills, these are both going to be building. You're going to check building on the, uh, the paperwork that you fill out each session. And this means that you're going to build a new framework of study skills of how to study with the student. Now, if they don't, if they do have study skills, uh, a framework set up, but it's not working, it might take some convincing to the student to let go what, what existing framework they already have and try to figure out a new one. Um, you want to concentrate on their note-taking skills. Are they doing an outline? Can they do an outline? Do they need to draw out a diagram? Um, you know, and whatnot, and we'll get to note-taking skills in a different lecture. Uh, and by doing this, you want to make sure that they cover getting definitions of the vocabulary words. They can do outlines, concept maps, etc. Also, uh, goals timeline. What I mean by goals timeline is they want to have a timeline of their goals. And you want to have small goals like, you know, Goal one, finish this assignment. You know, goal two, uh, read the first page in the chapter or, you know, just go through the vocabulary words of uh, the chapter that they're studying and get the definitions, make a little glossary of it or something. You want to do a five-day study plan. Um, the student might not be able to plan out their schedule for the whole rest of the semester, but you can. Uh, look over the next five days and just for the next five days get some goals down on okay tonight you're going to finish assignment one tomorrow you're going to go over uh, section one's definitions and define those words 
Day three, you're going to enter those words into Quizlet. Day four, you're going, you know, so just for five days, by the time five days is over, chances are you're the student's going to be back in session with you again and then in that session you can sit down and plan out the next five days and so on. So by breaking it up into little sections like that into five days at a time that helps uh, keep the student from being overwhelmed with their schedule. Now also if they do not have a framework of study skills set up at all and a lot of students will be honest with you and they'll be like I don't know how to study I don't know you know, and uh, they'll say things like, I don't know what the teacher wants, I don't know what's important, what I should write down is important or not. Um, I don't, the, they complain that the teacher is just lectures, the lectures are all over the place and it doesn't have a logical flow to it. Any of those complaints are indicators that the student doesn't have a good study structure set up. So if that's the case, you want to first you want to make sure that they have a time commitment that they understand that going to college is going to take time out of their own personal lives to study they can't just go to class and go to tutoring and then that's it they must study on their own they must study in their other hours of their day now the general rule of thumb is two and a half hours for each credit hour the class is worth every week so say if you have a chemistry class that's five credit hours, that's 12 and a half hours per week that they should be studying outside of class, that they should invest 12 and a half hours per week that they should invest in studying that chemistry um, and not including the times that they go to class. Um, also vocabulary, formulas, and processes. You wanna make sure that when they take notes, um, they might be confused on how to take notes. Their notes might be disorganized. You want to make sure that they have a vocabulary list with all the definitions of the vocabulary. You, if they're doing anything math related or chemistry related, you want to make sure instead of a vocabulary list, they might want to have a, like a cheat sheet, little piece of paper with all of their math formulas written on it or all their chemistry formulas written on it so they can refer to it as they go along doing the practice practice problems. Um, also creating these little uh, vocabulary sheets and, and formulas that helps drill it into their memory also if you can get it all on a piece of paper that and write it writing it down the actual act of writing it down again will drill it into their memory and it'll help their memorization. Uh, processes same thing just like as I was saying uh, for example mitosis and meiosis in biology those are processes those are a chain of events that ha one happens after the other so they want to make sure that they have down um, when they're taking notes on like say mitosis or meiosis they want to have down some sort of flow chart that shows the logical order of events the sequence of events of mitosis or meiosis and you can do all of this with you know either just paper out of their notebook or they can have make note cards to memorize things or quizlet as i had mentioned before now if the student needs a study plan so this would be building this is building so building i'll just put building okay so building um, if they don't need a study plan if either they don't have one or the one that they have is ineffective um, this is just more in detail of what we just went over the note-taking skills for one they want to make sure they have they get the definitions down and I know I keep going back to this but repetition is key and I want to make sure that I am emphasize this enough you cannot study something and understand it if you don't know what the words mean that you're reading so you have to have to have to make a vocabulary sheet and write down all the words you don't understand even if the words aren't in bold in the text I know some texts make the words bold when they're vocabulary words but if you're reading over something and you don't understand what a word means no matter what the word is you need to look that up now organization you need to organize your notes um, and this I 
this is when I mentioned if the student comes in and they're complaining, the teacher is all over the place, they don't understand what the teacher wants. That's a common complaint. Uh, they don't understand what they're going to be tested on. They, they just want to know what they're going to be tested on. You get that a lot from students. You know, it's like, I just want to know what I need to know to, that, that's going to be on the test. Well, you need to know everything. That's why the teacher puts it in the class, the, in the course. You need to know everything. So to say, well, just narrow it down for me what's going to be on the test. That's not really a good way to organize your notes. You want to organize your notes, you know, according to an outline or, you know, a concept map, you, because you want to be able to see how all of these concepts relate to each other and where they fit in. Because you need to be able to apply this knowledge. It's not just about gaining knowledge and memorizing steps or memorizing things. You then have to take the next step and you have to be able to apply the knowledge to solve problems, to problem solve. And so if you don't understand where everything fits together, like pieces of a puzzle and how things relate to each other, then you're not going to be able to answer those questions on the test when you go in and there's a question that uh, asks you to apply your, your knowledge. So flowcharts are the same thing, and we'll go into examples of these outlines and flowcharts in a different video, or you want to have that list of formulas. A goals timeline, we went over this a little bit. You just want to make a timeline of when to accomplish the studying sections. Uh, you want to do it over the next five days. Five days at a time is really good. Also, uh, the five days leading up to a test is pretty important. You want to make sure that you have a schedule set, set for the student for five days before a test. And break up large sections. Um, and projects into smaller, more manageable goals. The It's way overwhelming when you have to read 50 pages of a text with really fine print and you don't know when you're going to find the time to do it. But if you do, well, I'm going to read one section at a time. Today I'm just going to read the first section. Then that's a lot more, um, that's, a, that's a lot less scary and it's a lot less overwhelming and it's you can you feel like you know you may not be able to sit down and read 50 pages but you can read five so you know just work on the small goals one after the other and you'll eventually get the entire thing read now vocabulary formulas and processes and again we're going to go over this in another video as well um, Memorization tools, you can use note cards, you can use Quizlet. I highly recommend Quizlet, especially for people who work, uh, who work a lot and they don't have a lot of time to just sit down and study all at once. You download the Quizlet app on your phone and when you're at work or you're on a break or something, instead of checking your Facebook, go through the Quizlet real quick and then you can check your Facebook. You know, it only takes a couple of minutes to go through one of those Quizlets that you write for yourself and the more you do it, the more you go over it, the more you're going to drill that into your head and you're going to be able to remember this stuff. So Quizlet, I highly recommend. I highly recommend the phone app so you can quiz yourself no matter everybody takes their phone with them everywhere so if you have your phone with you that's all you need you can just go on Quizlet and quiz yourself real quick while you're waiting in line or waiting at the doctor's office or anything flowcharts and we'll go over how to do a flowchart in a different video or that list of formulas just that little cheat sheet of formulas that you have uh, so that you can refer to as you're going through the material also you want to deepen uh, understanding. You want to know how to deepen your understanding so you can apply this information, not just memorize it. So one thing and that I highly recommend to people, and people don't think about this, but I really think it's a big deal and it makes all the difference in the world, is you don't want to go to class, listen to the teacher's lecture, then go home and read the material. You want to go over the material before the class lecture, and whether that be whether that mean reading uh, the text uh, before the class lecture or just going over your teacher's notes if you're if you have one of those teachers that put the notes online so you can print them out or you can go over them before class you want to go over the material before the class lecture because you, if you don't know what you're going to be studying and you go into class and the teacher gives her lecture 
this information is going to be hitting you for the very first time. And so, of course, you're not going to know how to take notes to that because you're not going to know what's important and what's not, how things fit together, because you're hearing it for the very first time. And you're not going to remember everything from that lecture. We only walk away with, you know, 40% of what we were just told. We only usually take with us, you know, 40%, anywhere between 40 and 80% of the information, you know, by memory. You got to write that stuff down. So if you go into class and this is the very first time you're hearing something, it's going to be really hard to take notes and you're going to be trying to write something down and you're going to miss the next five minutes of what the teacher said because you're busy writing something down, uh, trying to figure it out in your head, thinking about what the teacher just said. So if you read the material or go over the material before the class, you're going to already know what it is that you're supposed to be studying. So when the teacher gives the lecture, it's going to make so much more sense to you because you're going to have a background with what she's talking about. And you're also going to know what questions to ask. You're also already going to know where you're confused at. And so you're going to know what kind of questions that you need to ask during class. You can't ask questions on the fly uh, a lot of times in the middle of a class lecture because you know, she might be covering that topic next time or it might not be relevant. But if you already know what it is you're, cover you're supposed to be covering and you already know what it is you're kind of fuzzy on and you're not, not really understanding, look, go to the lecture and listen to the lecture. And then if you still don't understand, you'll know how to add, ask questions. Ask, knowing how to ask questions is a huge uh, deal, is a huge part of learning. Also to deepen the student's understanding. Uh, you might want to recommend that they watch some tutorial videos. Videos help a lot some, uh, for some people. And YouTube it has great tutorial videos on almost anything. I highly recommend the channel, the YouTube channel called Ninja Nerd Science. They're really good for biology, microbiology, and anatomy. Um, also Khan Academy is a really good website and they have videos and they're really good with uh, math and chemistry. They have some really good uh, videos explaining math and chemistry. Also, just to back to rehash the schedule time commitment, you need two and a half hours per credit hour per week to study outside of class. Now, some people just can't manage that, you know, so don't give them a guilt trip or anything, but the student needs to understand that college is a time commitment. I mean, it's college and it's very important, a very important investment for your future. It's worth investing that extra time each week to make sure that you know what you're talking about so you can pass your classes and get that degree. So it's very important the student understands. Some students will come in thinking they can just go to class, go to tutoring, and that's it. But they need to understand that college is a time investment. You have to invest your own time outside of school uh, in order to in order to pass the classes. And again, break up the, into short study sessions if you can. You don't have to sit down for a three-hour marathon uh, of studying, and that's actually not going to be really good for you. What's better is if you break it up into 10 to 20 minutes at a time and just, you know, just like the Quizlet app I was talking about on your phone, you just go over that quiz really quick for a couple of minutes while you're waiting in line somewhere and then later on you go over that quiz again and doing that in repetition at different times of the day uh, is really going to drill it into your memory a lot better than if you were to sit down for three hours at a time and quiz yourself. So thank you very much. This is a long video. I hope it was helpful. You can catch more of my tutorials for peer tutoring and also for math and science uh, on my channan 2 St. Louis Community College.